Welcome to worship. My name is Shannon White and I'm the Interim Pastoral Associate here at Round Hill Community Church. We're so glad you've come to be with us here for this service on this day. A couple of announcements before we begin our worship service together. First of all, following our service today, there will be an online and in-person sermon conversation and fellowship time. If you're here in worship, you can just come into the parlor. We're wearing masks. And if you're at home looking at this, there will be a Zoom link sent along with the, um, and, and apart from the worship link. And you can come on and join us at, on Zoom at 11 a.m. on Sunday. So please come and be with us. We'll have some reflections of sharing about the sermon and then some time for fellowship together. We had a great response last week and we look forward to having you with us this week as well. On Thursdays, I'm going to be beginning a new ministry called Thursday Connections. It's on Instagram and it will be an Instagram Live. So if you have an Instagram account or if you want to get one, you just go on and, and follow Round Hill Media and you'll see that each Thursday at 9 a.m. I'm gonna be doing a, about a 10 minute um, reflection and kind of spiritual exercise for anyone that wants to listen and you can tell your friends about it. And they will be saved. So if you miss the live, you can actually go back onto the Round Hill Media Instagram account and plug in later and listen to that. It's just a time to kind of on Thursday to settle in and center. And then finally, our book um, meeting on Wildlands by Evan Osnos will be on February 9th at noon here at the church in person and then at 5 p.m. on Zoom. So get started reading if you haven't started yet and be part of one of those conversations or both. Let us worship together. Let us pray. Oh God, you are the gathering one who calls us into community with each other to love and work, to support and heal. You are the gathering one who calls us into community with all people to bring justice and hope, freedom and truth. You are the gathering one who calls us into community with the whole creation to live in harmony, to cherish and renew. Let us worship God who makes us one. Amen. Hello, boys and girls. My name's Kareem, and I'm the mom of three beautiful children named Juliana, Lucian, and Alita. And I wanted to ask you a question. Has there ever been a time, whether it was in school or at home or even church, when somebody helped you one way or another? What did they do? Maybe it was that they let you borrow their school supplies because you left yours at home. Or maybe it was that they let you use their chair because there was no more left at the table. Or maybe they made you a beautiful card, kind of like this one, that my son Lucian made me to tell me how much he loved me. And it put a smile on your face because maybe that smile got lost some part of the early morning and you needed to find it again. When someone helped you out, it probably made you feel pretty good, didn't it? Knowing there were others out there that cared for you and were gonna support you and love you, just like God does, without asking for anything in return. Now, has there been a time you did something for somebody else, an act of love and kindness for somebody. I bet you did. So what were some of those acts of kindness you did for other people? Well, it reminds me about a book called The Giving Tree that my mom gave me when I was a little girl. And it talks about this tree and this boy and their relationship with each other and how the tree would always be there for the boy, no matter what the boy needed. The boy would come to the tree to get apples and leaves and to stay in its shade and the tree just loved the boy and that's why the tree always gave to the boy made the tree happy to give to that boy and 
it kind of reminds me of um, something Mr. Rogers used to say. Uh, Mr. Rogers is somebody that I just loved watching on TV. And he reminds us that God gave us a gift that deep within us, no matter who we are, there lives a feeling of wanting to be lovable, of wanting to be the kind of person others like to be with. And the greatest thing we can do is let people know that they are loved and capable of loving. So it doesn't matter your age, you can always do acts of kindness. And I think I can see you guys doing one pretty soon, maybe today. Anyways, I think we should pray. Dear God, please give us the strength to open our hearts to help all people and animals when they are in need and to let those acts of love remind us of you and what you and your son Jesus have done for us. Make us full with happiness while we pursue acts of love unto others. Help us come to you with a teachable spirit eager to be changed as we know you have plans to give us hope and a future. Amen. Have a great day. We have two scripture lessons this morning. The first comes from the Hebrew scriptures, Micah chapter six, verses six through eight. The second is the gospel of Matthew, chapter five, verses one through 10. Listen now for God's word. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn tr for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And our gospel lesson is a very well-known and familiar text of the Beatitudes. Listen now with a new, and, and ask for a new understanding. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our sermon series on Gary Gunderson's book, Deeply Woven Roots, Improving the Quality of Life in Your Community. Last week I talked about the idea of Gunderson of that of accompaniment, the side-by-side -side ministry that we're called to in the journey of faith. This week our theme is blessing and the sermon title is The Power to Bless. It may be a difficult concept to grasp. So let's start with our scripture in Micah, perhaps the most famous of all the scriptures in the Hebrew text. Micah's undeniable proclamation of our purpose here on earth, which is later delineated by Jesus in the Beatitudes in Matthew. If there were ever a question of what God wants from us, it's here in these scriptures to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And we might look at it this way. The Micah passage addresses the what we are to do, the actions, and the Matthew passage addresses how we do that. So we accomplish the actions of doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God by being humble and compassionate, striving for righteousness, and having mercy, having a pure heart, and being a maker of peace. The result of doing and being these things is that we are a blessing to others. Being a blessing to others, what a concept totally otherworldly in secular culture, and certainly not expected or rewarded for the most part in our broader society in which we live, which tells us to grab everything we can, to reject those who don't sound like, look like, or think like you and me. Gunderson says, this is how blessing comes to us if it comes at all from one human to another in the name of all that lasts in song, prayer, silence, word, touch, presence. Here's how one man put that into practice. Michael Tenney was by all intents purposes a successful businessman, self-described type A, profit-driven business leader. His priorities in his thriving business, profit, customers, and employees. Sounds right, correct? His success was evident. That is until January 2001 when he got caught for trying to defraud the government. He was sent to prison for five years. But he says in his TED talk, in December of 2019, that two years into his sentence, he had an experience which completely changed his life. Although he doesn't say it specifically, I imagine it was some sort of spiritual overhaul. He became a monk for some time and now has emerged as a social entrepreneur who is out on the circuit teaching a new way of doing business devoting his life to love better and to help others do the same. He believes that making love a priority in business is beneficial as well as profitable. Based on his research, he outlines in his TED Talk how standard business priorities of profit, customers, and employee actually guarantees a company's premature death. But great leaders and profitable companies put loving their employees at the top, doing whatever they can to improve the long-term well-being of their team members to grow and thrive. Then come the customers and the goals of the organization. And profit, he says, comes naturally as employees know they're cared for. And he cites even Herb Keller from Southwest Airlines as an example of that. 
That's fascinating to me. Tenney's realization of being a spiritual blessing, my words, to others by loving and putting people first, even above profits. But Gunderson says blessing also comes in community. He says, we do not have the power to bless ourselves when we need it most, just on the edge of slipping, sliding away. The power to bless exists between people when they gather at the intersection of human and holy. Only a community can say, bless you, bless us, yes, yes. So what might it look like as a church to align its mission with the idea of being a blessing to others? I think Round Hill does a pretty good job of that. But I recently came across an article which told the story of one congregation blasting wide open that idea. Last year, more than 137 million Americans struggled with medical debt, according to a CNBC report. And those costs, usually unexpected, are reportedly the top reason people take money out of their retirement accounts or file for bankruptcy. Those who cannot pay usually have to face collection agencies. One congregation in Birmingham, Alabama, which actually happens to be Leslie Kahn's former congregation, amazing, recently celebrated its 70th anniversary. In honor of that landmark, they decided to hold a fundraiser to benefit those in need. For its fundraiser, St. Luke's Episcopal Church, Leslie's old church, partnered with Rest in Peace Medical Debt, a nonprofit organization founded by two former debt collection executives that works with donors to purchase and forgive medical debt from the neediest cases according to its website, by purchasing debt on pennies on the dollar. Reverend Cameron Nations, the associate rector at St. Luke's and organizer of the fundraiser, said he found out about the organization through Emmanuel Memorial Episcopal Church in Champaign, Illinois, which last year partnered with Rest in Peace Medical Debt to forgive four million in medical debts. Nations had grown up in that congregation and was amazed since it's small congregation with no major donors. So in this case, the Diocese of Alabama quickly got on board, donating just more than $10,000 to kick off the fundraising efforts. And the church then raised 68,000 of their own, mostly from parishioners, although there were others from the community who pitched in as well. Because hospitals sell off unpaid bills at discounted rates, the church and rest in peace medical debt were able to buy 8.1 million, 8.1 million dollars in debt for just $78,000. As a result, 6,500, that's 6,500 of the neediest households in central Alabama had their medical debt forgiven over the Christmas holidays that year. People who had no connection with St. Luke's. They were a blessing. It just gives me chills thinking about that. And then I read this past week that the UC, the UCC recently did a similar action over this past holiday with congregants from 20 congregations in Tennessee and Missouri joining together to raise $30,000, which wiped out medical debt totaling 3.9 million for 2,950 families from 101 counties in Tennessee and Missouri. I love that. The church as a blessing with no opportunity for it to be paid back to the congregation. Whether individually or as a community, we can be a blessing to others, even allow for differences between us. John O'Donohue says, the word blessing evokes a sense of warmth and protection. 
It suggests that no life is alone or unreachable. That's in his book, To Bless the Space Between Us. Sometimes offering a blessing to someone may take a surprising turn, even letting go of a relationship. There was a man in a former congregation that I served who was struggling with some of the ways our particular congregation was interpreting the gospel. He wanted me to say things in a certain way which was counter to our idea, the congregation's idea, of the inclusive love of God that our congregation believed and lived. I could see his struggle weekly. He began to split his time between our congregation and another which followed more closely to the way he believed. So I went to see him at his house one day. We had a long talk about his beliefs. And I told him in a loving way that the other congregation was probably better suited to his beliefs than ours was. And then I said, I bless you on your way. He was so relieved. No one was angry or hurt. There was an acknowledgement that our paths were just different. We had warm interactions after that when we saw each other socially and even occasionally when he came back to visit our congregation. And sometimes blessings can be misunderstood. Back in my first congregation in Scarsdale, I was taking our confirmation class over to another house of worship which was over in Queens. It was a Hindu uh, mandir. And when I was traveling with the confirmation class, I, I was driving the car and I said, hey everybody, let's do a random act of kindness. Let's, let's provide a blessing. And so as we were crossing over one of the bridges and the tolls came, we told the toll taker, I said, you know, we wanna pay for the person behind us but you know, please don't tell, us, tell them who we are or anything like that. And of course, behind us drove up a black Mercedes. <laughs> so I said, okay, remember, this, we do this anonymously. So we zoomed off and started going in between traffic. Well, wouldn't you know that the Mercedes started weaving in traffic too to come up to us and came up on the passenger side where the confirmand was, and the man looked very agitated and he motioned for us to roll down the window and he goes, what are you doing? And the confirmand said, we're just doing a random act of kindness. And the man was so mistrustful of what was happening. He goes, why are you doing that? And the, the confirmand just said, we're offering a blessing. We're doing a random act of kindness. And we just drove on. But it was so interesting that he had a hard time receiving and misunderstanding blessing. The idea of being and offering a blessing is not just a Christian concept. Did you know that one definition of the word namaste, accompanied by a small prayer gesture, comes from Sanskrit and is used among Hindus? The God in me sees the God in you. Or the divine light in me sees the divine light in you. And blessings really deep, reach deep within us, don't they? O'Donohue says, in the parched deserts of postmodernity, a blessing can be like the discovery of a fresh well. When a blessing is invoked, it changes the atmosphere. Some of the plentitude flows into our hearts from the invisible neighborhood of loving kindness. In a dead wall, a new window opens, he says. In a dense darkness, a path starts to glimmer. And into a broken heart, healing falls like morning dew. Such beautiful words. What does the Lord require of us? To be a blessing to others. May we all receive blessing upon blessing. And may we realize our power to bless, heal, and renew one another. May it be so. Hallelujah. Amen.
As we come together as a community for prayer, we're asked to remember those in the Ukraine as they face threat from those who would do them harm. And so let us keep them and others in our lives who need a special blessing on this day. Let us pray. God who blesses humankind and all of creation, we come to you on this day with open hearts, asking for your blessing on others. God bless those who are poor in spirit, who feel empty inside and who dread the day. God bless those who mourn and grieve, who ache with loss for someone so much loved. God bless the people who are meek, who do not grasp or shout or demand to be first in line. God, bless the people who are hungry for justice and who cannot wait for everyone to have their rights. God, bless all who are merciful, who have learned to forgive even those who hurt them deeply. God, bless all who are pure in heart, in whom there is no vengefulness, but only love. God, bless the peacemakers, the ones who, by their words and deeds, can change the world. And we particularly pray for peace among the Ukraine and the Russian Federation. God, bless the persecuted ones and keep them safe from all those who would hurt them. God, so rich in blessings for your children, we rejoice in your promise and in your boundless and transforming grace. May we bless others in our lives in big and small ways. May we bless others even when we don't feel it. May we bless others who don't deserve it in our minds. May our words, our deeds, even our thoughts be generous, kind, and gracious. And show us as a congregation how we may continue to creatively bless those within our town our state, our country, and our world. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. And let us pray our church prayer saying, our heavenly Father, shed forth thy blessed spirit upon all our lives. Make each one of us an instrument in thy hands for good. Purify our hearts, strengthen our minds and bodies, fill us with Christian love. Let no pride, no self-conceit, no rivalry, no ill will ever spring up among us. Make us earnest and true, wise and prudent, giving no just cause for offense. And may thy holy peace rest upon us this day and every day throughout the coming week, sweetening our trials, cheering us in our work, and keeping us faithful to the end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth from here, my friends. May we all receive blessing upon blessing. And may we realize our power to bless, heal, and renew. And may the grace and peace of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>